Well, you know, if you really want to understand semiconductors, who better to talk to than the man who's been described as the father of Indian hardware, Ajay Chaudhary, the founder and former CEO of HCL. You're also an advisor, of course, in the Indian Semiconductor Mission. That's right. And you've been trying to work out a semiconductor policy for what? How long is it? Yeah. Maybe 30 odd years. <laughs> 30 years you've been saying India should have semiconductors. Yes. And finally, it's looking as if it could be possible. Yes, that's right. Do you think it's possible this time? It will definitely happen. It will definitely happen. Why? Why do you say that? You see, actually, uh, this time, I think the seriousness with which the government has taken up this project is phenomenal. And the benefit that we have this time is that we have two ministers who are very, very tech savvy. Yeah. And they really understand why semiconductors are required. And as a result, they have created a policy which is extremely attractive. I think it's the most attractive policy in the world. If if US gives 30% of, uh, of your total uh, budget for semiconductor plant, India gives 50% and the states give another 20%. So if you're setting up a semiconductor plant or you're setting up a fab in India, central government pays 50% of it. And if you're setting it up wherever UP or Gujarat, they'll give another 20, 25 That's correct. So you only have to, and these are expensive plants. Very expensive. But the government is paying 70%, That's right. 75%. That's right. That's right. And also the enabling environment, is that now fairly clear and fairly clear cut as to what... It's, it's going to take time. Yeah. But the good news is that the type of uh, advisors that the government this time has on ISM are global Indians. Right. So they have really taken advantage of all the capability of the diaspora. And as a result, they're getting extremely good advice on how to do, what to do, when to do, etc., etc. And we are no longer uh, looking at the proposals in, in a, on a paper situation. This time the proposals, they have, they have gone down very deep to understand the technology, the kind of people, will they be able to... See, if they're going to spend 70%, then the business plan has to be very, very good and successful. And the person has to be good, right? Yes. So you're betting on somebody, yes. it can't be a fly by yeah, night yeah, operator. Yeah. No, no, not at all. It has to be all. somebody who has to yes. have the ability to scale Correct. it in the rest of it. Correct. Uh, just to understand, and seeing as we do have you, know, you with us, there are three different aspects of semiconductor business from what I've understood, right? There's design, part A, part B is the fab of the wafer, and that's where the, a lot of money comes in. And the third is then in... I, you know, is the sort of assembly and the packaging, the packaging and yeah. assembly and that sort of a thing. In the first has got relatively smaller investments. We've got a fair amount of talent pool. The second one is where the big investments are required. Yes. The fab. Correct. That's where the billions of dollars come in. Correct. Where do you think we'll be able to set it up? All three or just in the third part? Look, we have to be there in all three. Okay. As a matter of fact, all four. One piece is missing as yet, which is being put in put together now. Which so is? you, which is R and D. Ah, so you see, the first part That's not is part of the design. No, 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 no. That's totally different. The R and D is meant for the plant. Yeah. So you need to create processes for what you're going to do in the plant, for which you need R and D. Okay. So the first piece is designing a chip, which where we are very good at. I mean, we have great capability. But all the people today are designing for the world. They don't design for India. So I think now that has to change. So the government has came, come out with a, a design-linked incentive scheme, which is enabling people to set up design centers here. And our objective is to get at least 100 startups to create design centers here. For So the uh, design, we would not be... India has always had talent. India is doing a lot of it abroad. And, you know, you would expect that. I guess even part of the understanding with the U.S., is about tapping into Indian talent? The, the new I MOU guess that so, but inside. there's no details available of that uh, MOU. Yeah. The, so the design part I get, but the fab, 5 billion, mm. 10 billion, stable, I guess power problems like water and power and roads are not a problem in India anymore. No, Luckily, no, no. That's all. been sorted out. Sorted out. But that sort of investment, right? So I you know see, there are three proposals. See, they, after all, they're, they're, the risk that the government has to take is a 70% risk. And that's why it's taking longer to decide, okay? But what we see is that there are good proposals available. At least one or two proposals are good. And more will come up because everybody is now getting very interested in India. Because suddenly when this announcement of Foxconn coming and investing into India has happened, everybody is woken up all over the world. That Apple is moving its plants here, all of that is happening. And you need to do it because Taiwan and China, there's yeah, geopolitical yeah, yeah. problems. Is China going to invade Taiwan? Correct. What happens to chip supplies Correct. all over Correct. the world? Correct. So there's that. Everybody's worried about it. 
So they want a good stable supply of chips from a country. And that's why India becomes very favorable for that. I've been talking to you about this book you just launched, written a fantastic book, Just Aspire. You talked about how these cycles have been done in the past. And yes. you have you also mentioned in that that a lot of these revolutions would have been considered by India Nika Sakti. Ah. India can't be in hardware. That's right. India can't produce PCs. That's right. India can't produce mobile phones or get into the mobile phone Correct. space. India can't do XYZ. India is a software country. Yeah. That has changed? That has changed dramatically. I remember meeting uh, somebody in the government about 15 years, 17 years ago, and I went to his home and I said, uh, we, want, uh, we, have re we represent hardware and this is what we want to do. He says, why should we waste time on hardware? We are doing so well in software, let's continue. The reality is that if you're not in hardware, you're really missing out. Yeah. Because software and hardware are two sides of the same coin. And if you don't do hardware, you actually miss out a very large market which is available to India. And today the benefit is that hardware is no longer just hardware. It's huge amount of software integrated into hardware. So as a country, we have a benefit that we can put together software and hardware together and create a solution. India software kar sakti hai, India services kar sakti hai, India will not be able to do hardware. Hmm. You, as I said, you've been called the father of yes. Indian hardware. Yes, that's right. You've heard that how many times? And many, 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 many times. But and I you think believe that it can be done. The situation and now, has changed today. If you start looking at what's happened in the last three to four years with PLI and all these things happening, we are the second largest exporter of mobile phones in the country. We are suddenly getting there in manufacturing. Now we need to take the next step of designing products in India and making India a product nation. If we don't do that, if we don't have Indian brands, who will be the customer for the semiconductors? You could. I mean, technically, you could be manufacturing them out here and selling them to the apples and the Samsung. No, 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 no. The, the kind of uh, chips that we are going to make in India are not going to be bought by apples, etc. These are 28 nanometer and above chips. So these chips are actually meant for the industry, like uh, uh, let's say office automation industry or automobile industry, yeah. or uh, you look at uh, the washing machines, etc., etc. So it's oh, so not India is not going to necessarily try and do the high no, end. No, chips. no, no, no. There required. is no need for us to do that. Okay. Because that is what we will be able to easily get from other countries. So we don't need to waste our time on that. We need to start somewhere. And therefore, we have to start from 28 nanometers and above. And the interesting part is globally also that market is still growing. Okay. Ajay Chaudhary, thank you so much for joining us. Let's hope that that revolution, which you've seen in other industries, will come to semiconductor. I hope so too. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. And congratulations for your new book. Thank you so do much. Read, everyone should read it if they haven't yet done that. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much.